Hello, my name is Andy and I am the Village Idiot. I'm armed with a car and a GoPro and an unhealthy amount of time on my hands. I'm using that time to attempt to visit every civil parish in England. You're watching the Harrogate series. Harrogate is a large borough, one of the 11 districts of North Yorkshire. It's got 139 civil parishes. Which one are we in in this episode? Welcome back to Harrogate everybody and to a village which is the biggest one you've seen in this part of Yorkshire for quite a while. This one will take me a good hour to walk around. It's full, it's loaded with things which are just fantastic. And the drive-in that I did a few minutes ago, I saw most of the landmarks and I thought to myself, you guys are really going to enjoy this one. I think you are, honestly. Welcome to the parish of Burton Leonard. Here's my disclaimer for people who may be watching me for the first time. I say things as I would in my native accent and dialect. As a result, I may not pronounce things in the same way as the locals do. Remember, I'm a visitor. It's impossible to know everything. Leave me a comment, spin me a like and bash that subscribe button. Let's get to today's parish video. Burton Leonard, St. Leonard's Fortified Manor. Round 19 in Harrogate brings us to Burton Leonard, a picturesque village located seven miles to the south of Ripon. This is a thriving place with lots of interest. Its central village green has always been its focal point and it remains so today. Easily one of the prettiest villages we've covered so far in Harrogate, it takes its name from the local church dedicated to St. Leonard, which sits right in the center of civilization. It's been the heart of this clustered community for centuries. Many of the oldest properties here are built of magnesian limestone, much of which came from the village itself. To the south on the border with Britain is a former quarry, which is now a site of special scientific interest. It seems a long time ago since we saw a village in Harrogate with a shop, but Burton Leonard has one of those, as well as a school, a sports field and a pub, the Royal Oak. There used to be two pubs, but the Hare and Hound was demolished a few years ago. It also has an interesting field on its southern edge, which we will cross. Notable people to have called this place home include comedy writer David Nobbs, the creator of The Fall and Rise of Reginald Perrin. Let's see what attracted him to Burton Leonard. Spoiler alert, it'll have been pretty much everything. Let's go. We start our walk on Mill Lane, which runs west towards Moor Farm. Right off the bat, we have a piece of village history that's now gone forever. These houses, St. Leonard's Row, stand on the site of the former Hare and Hounds pub, which was demolished in 2017, leaving behind just the Royal Oak. Despite the loss, Burton Leonard still has a vibrant community and holds many events. Annually, the locals hold a Scarecrow Festival on the first bank holiday in May. It's part of Mayfest, which also features maypole dancing and fancy dress. At the heart of the community is a building with a connection to the village's name. This is St. Leonard's Church, which occupies a commanding position right in the centre of it all. Grade 2 listed, this one dates from 1878 when it was built to replace a much older church. That former building was actually dedicated to St. Helen, but was formally dedicated to St. Leonard in the Middle Ages, hence the name Burton Leonard. The church and its lit gate sit within the boundaries of the Burton Leonard Conservation Area, which also covers the village greens. Here
Here is the Lick Gate. As well as the church's entrance, it also serves as a war memorial, listing 10 names from World War I and two from World War II. On the grass bank on the church's western side is a cross. This is actually a village sign, and it was placed here in the year 2000 to mark the turn of the millennium. That brings us to the Methodist Chapel. This was built in 1894, and some know it today as George Armitage House. It's the base of a local charity called Dementia Forward, who support people across North Yorkshire living with the disease. Crossing the green space in front of the chapel will bring us onto Station Lane, a reference to the former station at Wormald Green. It's also the location of the parish notice board. Mark off Burton Leonard troops, it's done. Now to the central green, which features a shelter with a weather vane atop it. This is the parish pump, which has an inscription on it reading Yorkshire Television Winners 1993. That's a reference to a TV knockout quiz that was held for village teams. Burton Leonard defeated Ashover in the final that year. Amenities next, and here's the village shop, a very busy and popular establishment. So much so, Burton Leonard does have parking problems in this central area. With its narrow rural thoroughfares, it can make passing through the village a nightmare for lorries. Next is the Royal Oak, the one remaining pub. It's an Edwardian building with gables, decorative woodwork and nouveau stained glass. Like the shop, there's limited car parking at the front, but it also has a beer garden at the rear where an annual summer beer festival is held. Hymas Court now. This stands on the site of what was once the village's biggest employer, transport company Alfred Hymas Limited. A few paces away on the village's southern fringe is this field. This is full of earthworks, well-pronounced ones at that. What these are, though, is a mystery. Historic England, which usually knows about this sort of stuff, drew a blank. I'd like to think they marked the site of some kind of manorial complex or perhaps a fish pond. Whatever this was, it was pretty big, but with no documentary evidence, it's just a pure guess. After crossing the field, the path skirts the back edge of the local primary school. We'll be seeing the front of this shortly after we've emerged onto Scarra Lane. This path, narrow and lined with slippery leaves, might look pretty nondescript, but in actual fact it's taking us to a little-known landmark. Even though it's nice, it's not this house, it's the one next door, a large white property called Prospect House. Its owners run a bright prospect, hands-on gardening and floristry workshops in its grounds and its potting shed. Scarra Lane is a bit of an anomaly in Burton Leonard. As you can see, it's a brick terrace. Most of the property in the village is made of limestone, especially the older houses. The village had its own limestone quarry, and Alfred Hymas would often transport aggregates from it. The much-praised primary school on Front Street is both brick and stone. This is a small school which offers around 60 places for the local children. Ofsted last rated this outstanding. The end of Front Street brings us to the phone box, which still has a working telephone. We're now on Station Lane again, briefly, and it's time to talk communal buildings. Burton Leonard has a village hall, located further up Station Lane towards Wormald Green. Before it was built in 1930, this was the main communal venue. Known as St Leonard's Hall, it's a former primitive Methodist chapel which was built in 1841. Smaller groups still meet here, and it's the venue for charity coffee mornings. The village hall is the focus for larger gatherings. It has a public entertainment license, a stage, and it can seat 120 people. Peter Lane is next. Now this is a back street which has three different arms, one central and one either side of it, known as High Peter Lane and Low Peter Lane respectively. It's on High Peter Lane where we'll come to our next big landmark, the sports field, which occupies a huge tract of land to the northwest. I was met with a flock of very expectant sheep at this point who probably thought I had food. I can confirm I didn't. A few steps later and the sports field comes into view as does this large children's playground. With sports facilities for tennis, football, cricket and bowls, the residents of the village have pretty much everything they need sports-wise. 
The land this field occupies was purchased for £800 in 1966 and laid out during the next two years for football, cricket and tennis. The project was almost entirely completed by volunteers and it formally opened in August 1968. The bowling green was added later, in 1983. All four sports have thriving junior coaching sessions, making Burton Leonard a bit of a sports haven locally. Not bad for 800 quid. From here it's down Low Peter Lane, which is a dead-end track, although there is a public footpath which runs from it to Straight Lane. This path crosses two wet and sludgy fields, but no pain, no gain. The sun was now starting to break through the clouds too, illuminating the area with bright light. To sum it all up, for a settlement of fewer than a thousand residents, Burton Leonard is a hive of activity, one of the prettiest in the local area, and very desirable. Rumour has it Daniel Craig once looked at property here, you know. Well, who can blame him? Okay, so we've reached Straight Lane, and this runs down the side of the church, and then we turn left onto Mill Lane and back up the hill towards the car. And that has been Burton Leonard. What a beautiful little village. I'm sure you'll agree. And there we go, we've climbed the hill back to where we began. It took me about 45, maybe 50 minutes to get round Burton Leonard. Nice village, nice village, and it's full of all sorts of interesting stuff. It's fantastic. Time to move on to the next one, which is a lot smaller. And it's off we go to the next one. That's Burton Leonard in the books and 19 down in Harrogate. Only 120 to go. If you like horses, you should definitely come back this time next week for number 20. The next two will rank among the smallest we've been to so far. They're blink and you'll miss it kind of places. I'll see you later. Thanks for watching this video folks, don't forget to like this episode if you haven't already, it really makes a difference with YouTube. If you're new here, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this, and give us a share too if you've got friends who'd like it. You can find all the links to my social media accounts below, as well as my buy me a coffee page where you can donate to the channel. Also if you've enjoyed this episode, have a look at some more videos in this series. Until next time, I've been Andy, also known as the Village Idiot, and I'm out.